undetected footprints, we are talking about Chance Engelberg, who was 25 years old when he went missing from Terrytown, Nebraska on July 6th of 2019. It's been five years since Chance vanished during a holiday visit to see his in-laws in Nebraska. As his family gets ready to mark the unhappy anniversary, unhappy anniversary, new leads have emerged that may help shed light on the Moorcraft, Wyoming man's whereabouts that night. Chance was last seen on surveillance video walking down a residential street in Gearing, Nebraska. The new lead have places him at a convenience store in the neighboring city of Scotts Bluff about two miles from where he was last picked up on camera. A second tip involved two young women in distress who were spotted running down a road near the new location. Chance last seen may be one more clue in unraveling the mysteries of what happened that night. Chance, his wife, Bailey, and their infant son had driven to Gearing from their Moorcraft home in the shadow of Devil's Tower to visit her family for the 4th of July holiday weekend. Chance had spent the day golfing with his father-in-law and other in-laws when he got angry over comments one of them had made about his new job. Chance had just been laid off from his job at an area coal mine, along with hundreds of others, and was set to begin a new position at a propane company in Moorcroft the following Monday. He called Bailey from the golf course and asked to be picked up. He told her he wanted to return to Wyoming, and as they drove to her grandparents' house, an argument ensued, according to Chance's mom, Dawn. When they arrived, Chance got out of the car and started walking away from their home. His disappearance. As he walked through Gearing, Chance called family members and his best friend, Matt Miller, asking them to pick him up, but all were at least four or more hours away. Chance told him he wanted out of Gearing, and planned to walk the 35 miles to Torrington, Wyoming. He never made it. He was last spotted on surveillance video walking along a neighboring Terry Town, about 1.5 miles north of Gearing, and halfway between Gearing and Scotts Bluff. In the video, he looks down at his phone before taking a 90 degree turn to the left, as if he was following a map. His last communication was a text to a family member at 9.08 p.m., just as a torrential storm swept through the area. The jumble of emojis and letters made no sense to any of them. He never used emojis, said his mom. Then his phone died, and he's not been seen or heard from since. Despite massive search involving 17 law enforcement agencies, Drones, divers, cadaver dogs, and hundreds of volunteers on foot, horseback, and ATVs, as well as several searches led by friends over the past two years. Chance is still missing. Chance's best friend Miller told Cowboy State Daily that he and other volunteers have been conducted about 25 searches of the area, beginning at the golf course along the North Platy River to Torrington but found no trace of his friend. The new evidence. What happened to Chance? that night and whether a crime was committed remains a mystery that law enforcement and volunteers pri and volunteer private investigators have been diligently trying to unravel for the past five years a new volunteer a private investigator working with the chance family has recently generated new information that may help fill in some of the holes of chance's last steps before his phone went dark. The investigator, who was asked to be identified by his company name, RD Investigations, has spoken to a former clerk at a convenience store in Scotts Bluff, who claims to have seen Chance in the store, time between 8.30 and 9 p.m., before the brunt of the storm hit. The store is about two miles from where Chance has last seen on surveillance video in Terrytown. The clerk said it had been raining lightly at that point, and he distinctly remembered Chance because the top of his shirt was wet with rain. He further told the investigator that he thought he saw Chance having a tense conversation with another man in the back of the store prior to Chance buying tobacco and a monster energy drink. As he rang up Chance's purchases, the man he thought Chance had been talking to in the back of the store was helped at a second register by a co-worker. 
The clerk told him he distinctively remembered carding Chance for the tobacco and the fact that he was from South Dakota. Chance grew up on his family's ranch in Edgemont, South Dakota, and he never switched his driver's license. The clerk told RD Investigations he recalled teasing Chance about crazy people from South Dakota being out in a Nebraska storm. The clerk told the investigator that Chance said that he had been in an argument with his wife and needed to take a walk, but had cooled off and was heading back now. The clerk praised him for his level-headedness in handling the situation. The clerk saw the other man hop into an unidentified vehicle but couldn't provide details of what it looked like, or if Chance got into the vehicle with him or took off on foot. He was too preoccupied with the sudden storm rolling in, thundering, booming, lightning flashing, and heavy rain pouring down, to the point where it later caused a power outage in town. The second new lead RD investigations uncovered was a sighting of two women in their mid-twenties, running alongside the road near Five Rocks and Stable Club Road around 9 p.m., within a mile vicinity of the storm which Chance was allegedly last seen. The two women were frantically calling out for assistance, who said witnesses described them as so beautiful they looked like models. The witnesses told RD Investigations that they then saw the women get into a white two-door pickup that was towing a small boat on a white trailer. They seemed to know the driver, he added. Whether this had anything to do with chance or if they had witnessed a crime or other event is yet to be determined. The investigators asking for anyone's information to come forward. All this information has been shared with Gearing and Scott's Buff Bluff Police, knowing that he now visited the area on multiple occasions and has spoken to dozens of witnesses and followed countless leads. Brian Eads, a lead investigator of the Gearing Police Department, confirmed he received the tip but hasn't determined whether it's credible. The theories. Eads has been tight-lipped about the open investigation. He told Cowboy State Daily that it is active and ongoing, but there are no updates to report. We continue to get tips and always would appreciate more. Eads has, was much more forthcoming in January of 2022 with an interview with News Nation, where he told the outlet that one theory they are investigating is a potential robbery gone wrong. Eads was quoted as saying that the robbery had been reported to him in several variations with different people and circumstances. Another theory that was floated on social media was that Chance wandered or accidentally fell into the surging North Platy River as a storm passed through that night. But both Matt and Don do not believe that given Chance's physicality as a former college rodeo star, as well as his vast experience hunting, and in the outdoors. Others on social media sites have speculated that Bailey's family was involved, but to date there's been no proof of that, and that Eve said that they have been cooperating fully with the investigation. Bailey did not respond to any email request for comment, but has told other news outlets in the past that she stopped doing interviews after receiving death threats. The tragedy has also torn the two families apart, and the Engelberts have not seen their grandson since their son disappeared. This 4th of July of 2024 marks a bittersweet occasion for his family. She continually humbled and touched by the outpouring of support from her friends and community. She said she liked it that people she'd like to ask that people honor their son by flooding social media with his flyer to show their support and to hopefully generate more tips and information. She's touched by the number of people who have shared his poster and others in her community, but who hang them in their storefronts or put out signs in their front yards. It is so humbling to see how many still support Chance and his family. It's still a living nightmare every day, and we will always need that extra support, love, and prayers. Through the new information seems promising, Dawn says she wakes up in the morning with a knot in her stomach, wondering if this is the day she will finally learn what happened to her son. Those thoughts never leave us. Some days it makes us physically ill still. I know many use the words closure, but I don't think we'll ever have that. Even if they find him, or what happened to him, there will always be questions of why. All we can ask is please keep sharing him and his beautiful smile, his name, and his story. Up next are some videos of Chan when he was doing rodeo. Let's take a look. 
riding bulls instead. He did this for about three years, and in eighth grade, he was finally old enough to move up to rodeo bareback riding. Watching that bull go last night, and he's just a sweetheart. I was really wanting to draw him, and then today he kind of came out there, and he's a little trickier to ride. He kind of went out there across there, really wanting to sit me back, and but I just cowboyed it out and made the whistle. So feel pretty good to get that buckle in. Right? Yep. All right. Yeah, first you, one from college, so. Let's talk about that. What's that like to, you know, finally have one in your hands? Oh, it feels amazing. I just, I've been struggling so much in bareback riding. I just started riding bulls again this year. And just to overcome what I've accomplished this year is just amazing. And I'm just proud of myself, proud of my team for helping me. Pretty wild, but that's kind of the way I grew up as being a little wild in bareback horse. And that's why I love doing it. And so it's a lot of fun. All right, the year so far is going pretty good, huh? Yeah, so far, oh, I don't know. It can always be a little better. I'm kind of traveling the middle of the pack, I guess, but this will help me out for the standings, and I think I'm sitting fourth now, so doing good. Here is Dawn, Chance's mom, speaking about her son. Let's watch. When people ask me to explain Chance, that's when it gets hard. It's hard to explain something that's bigger than light. Eddie lit up a room since he was a little, little boy. As a baby, he was just beautiful and so good. And he was so smart. And he knew he wanted to be a cowboy. He was a great kid, a great brother. He would do anything for anybody. He believed in paying it forward. I was so blessed, so blessed to get to spend so much time with all three of the boys. Chance was shy, could be a little awkward at times, but just a great all around kid. I just wish he would have known how good he was, how talented he was. He kind of lacked in the confidence on that. Um, but he was a very talented, hardworking young man. They had snuck out and went and got me a present and a card. And they were both sitting there with their little smiles. And you could tell they were a little nervous and something was up. And they opened the card and it said, don't be mad. You knew you always wanted to be a grandma. And I, of course, was ecstatic and started laughing. And everyone's like, well, we knew it was coming sooner or later. And Chad said, well, that was a pretty good gift for your birthday, wasn't it? And he was a very hands-on. He went to probably most of her doctor's appointments with her. In that three months, he was probably the best dad I've ever seen. And we were so proud of him. It's really unfair that he didn't get to spend the time he should have been watching Banks grow up and be the daddy he could have been. I was at first shocked when I heard Chance was going to be a father and, you know, I just didn't think we were, it was about that time to start having kids or even thinking about having kids, but I was overall excited and happy for him. And I could tell that he was excited and happy and was ready to take it on. Everybody wants to know what the fight was about with Chance and I. Um, we had two young girls in our lives and... Things were, had been said that I was talking about one behind the other one's back, and I was always so careful on that. I didn't, I, I didn't do things like that. If anything I said about Bailey that weekend, I would have said to Bailey herself, and most likely already had. Bailey always accused Chance of cheating on her. There was always a talk of that. Not sure when he would have had time to cheat on her, honestly, especially after they found out they were expecting, because he worked overtime all the time. Anytime that kid could get overtime, he was working. He never came to the ranch by himself. He never did anything without Bailey. So I don't really know when there was a whole lot of time. And he told me that night, I have never cheated on my wife. So I believe from October on, he was very faithful to her. I don't know what happened between them meeting and marrying. I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. I don't know what he would, would have done or had done. So that all just escalated. And one of the last things Chance had said to me is, give me the week to work on my marriage and stay out of it. And I said, anything you need, I'm, I'm here for you. The hardest, longest week of my life. And it wasn't anything that other families haven't gone through. We honestly didn't fight much. Our family just didn't. We'd go to bed and wake up and laugh at things. We just didn't fight. So this was very hard on our whole family. Saturday night, um, about 7.30, Everett and I were just sitting in the house uh, watching TV and I got a call from Matt and he said, hey, Mama Don, we've got some trouble. And he's like, well, Chance just called and he had a fight with the in-laws and he wants out of Nebraska. 
and he needs a ride home to Wyoming. I told him that we probably couldn't get down to get him, but that I would find a ride for him. So what do you think? And I said, well, Matt, I'm thinking after our discussion and fight last week that I am the last one he's going to want calling him to hear about a fight with Bailey and her family. So, but um, I will get his Uncle John and his Aunt Katie to call and check in with him, see what we can do. Let's just stay in touch. And he said, sounds great. I started calling John and Katie. Everett called Larry, um, another co-worker and good friend of Chance's that lived right across the street from Bailey. And Larry's like, gosh, no, I haven't heard from him. Let me call Bailey and see what's going on. Larry called Everett back and said, I just told Bailey that she had to call and talk to you guys about this. So a few months later, Bailey called and told Everett that it's um, not that big of a deal. It was just a misunderstanding on something that Kyler said out at the golf course and that not to worry, they were all out looking for him and that they would find him and they would stay in touch. So we called Matt back and said, he won't answer any of us. He, he wouldn't answer his dad. He wouldn't answer his Uncle John or his Aunt Katie. And uh, Matt said, yeah, he won't answer us either. We keep trying. So we talked to Bailey and Matt a couple times through the night. Around nine-ish, she had called and said there was a bad storm and that they had to take a few, some time off looking for him, but they'd go back out after the storm. And so we just kind of sat back and waited and really thought that, that they'd find him. Here is News Nation speaking about Chance's case. Check out what they say. Last night, we brought you the story of Chance Engelbert, the father and husband who went missing while visiting his in-laws in the small Nebraska town of Garing. That was two years ago. And after we aired his story, we heard from many of you with questions about this investigation. Detective Brian Eads is standing by to talk more about this case with us tonight. And we're also gonna show you more of investigative correspondent Rich McHugh's exclusive interviews with Chance's mother and friend that you haven't seen yet. But first, we wanna go through some of the facts here. This is what we know right now. On July 6, 2019, Chance became upset. Authorities say he got upset with his wife's family over comments about Chance's making less money at his new job. He got out of the car and then he walked away, calling a friend and asking him to pick him up and drive him back to Wyoming from Nebraska. And then Chance seemingly vanished. There are two main pieces of evidence in this case. This surveillance video that you're seeing here showing the last time anyone saw Chance. And then these strange text messages. I called him first and asked him, you know, hey, buddy, I just had a couple questions for you. Would you mind giving me a call? I didn't want him to think that we were all worried about him or checking up on him or that he wasn't handling something correctly. After he didn't answer and I text him, hey, tried calling you. I have a question. Would you call me back? I didn't get a response until 9.08 and I got an I'm and an emoji face with the straight line mouth and then some gibberish after that. And I responded with, you are what? Are you okay? And I got nothing after that. It's not something normal for him just to walk away. Something bad had to have happened for this to all be that way. His friends and his family believe may not have come from chance. Investigators are now looking at a couple of theories in the case. The first is a nearby river. The theory that chance could have wandered or fell in, possibly becoming disoriented or caught off guard in the middle of a powerful storm that was happening in Garing that night. But searches found no body, and Chance's friends and family say there is no way that happened. Us all angry, very angry. And I think it's a bunch of BS, honestly. Chance was a ranch kid. He rode bucking horses and bulls and played football and did demolition derby. He's stronger and bigger and smarter than that. I'll never believe that is even close to being a theory. I think the only way he ended up in the North Platte River is something dumped him there, honestly. But that's my theory. Some people say, look, there was a powerful storm that night. The river was at its all time high. Um, it's a very good chance that he ended up in the river and it's a tragic accident. What would you say? I, I'd say Chance was born and raised for that kind of weather. There's just no way it could take him. Um, I've hunted with him for two years beforehand. The, the guy could cover country. I, I like to call him a mountain goat, man. He could. He left me in the dust anytime we went hunting. Anytime. He was beyond belief, an outdoorsman. 
There's just no way the weather took him. And now the second theory is that something bad happened to Chance, something criminal, perhaps. Many have focused on that argument that he had with his in-laws before he disappeared. Bailey, his wife, and her family did not want to be interviewed on camera for this story because they say they have received threats. Police say they have been cooperative, the family has, since the beginning. But Bailey did speak to Rich McHugh on the phone, and here's what she told him. I told the cops everything that I know. I've been completely transparent with them. I've never had anything, hid anything from anybody involved with it. They just don't like the answers that I have to give. We invited the police into our homes to do searches, and we were all cleared long ago. And now here we are, two years later, and still no sign of Chance. This is what Chance's mom told Rich McHugh. You miss him? Yeah, terribly. I relive it over and over and over every day. <laughs> Excuse me. So I see the video of him walking down the street on the surveillance cameras and I replay that every day thinking that I'm going to figure out where and why. But nothing's coming yet. <laughs> In your mind, this was no accident? No. I, I don't, I'm not pointing fingers. I don't know if it was family or, or a robbery gone bad is what I've been told. He wouldn't have been by the river. He wouldn't have fell in the river. He wouldn't have jumped in the river. He wanted to come home, maybe not to the ranch, but he wanted to go to Wyoming. He wanted to start the new job. And the mystery continues. Brian Eads is leading the investigation into Chance's disappearance, and he is joining us live tonight from Nebraska. Uh, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, ma'am. I want to start with something uh, Chance's mom said right there, uh, potentially a robbery gone bad. Have you gone down that lane and found anything that helps corroborate that theory? Oh, we have. There's been a few different variations of that story uh, that have been reported uh, as far as different people involved, uh, different circumstances, all of which we look into and some continue to look into just little bits and pieces. Uh, still very much an active investigation. And, um, but yeah, we've, we've heard those same reports and, and follow up on them. Let's talk about something that Bailey said uh, that she told Rich McHugh. She said, I have told the cops everything I know. They just don't like the answers that I have to give. What is she referring to? Um, I think what she was referring to was that some of the, the public or the social media doesn't like the answers. Um, I, I've spoken with Bailey several times, um, formal interviews, uh, phone calls with follow-up questions, uh, occasionally a text message for a follow-up just based on a tip that comes in. She's always been very cooperative with me, very cordial. Um, interviewed her at, at length. Um, my first interview with her was probably a couple hours long, so she's always been very cooperative with me. Do you suspect foul play that a crime was committed that someone harmed Chance? I can't rule it out. It's one of those, uh, at this point, there's no evidence to suggest it did happen, but there's also no evidence to suggest it didn't. There's a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation. Um, like I said, we, we continue to get a lot of tips on the case, and some of them are very similar, but they'll have little pieces that are different. Like um, the people, the names will change, but the circumstances might be the same, or the names of the people involved will be the same, but the circumstances will be different. Mm -hmm. The hard part is, is when you go to try to run them down, it's always, well, I heard it from this person. And you talk to that person, it's like, well, I heard it from this person. Very often, we can't ever get to the person who actually saw or heard anything firsthand. It's just rumors and a lot of sometimes street credibility of people trying to go on to it to give themselves a little bit of street cred. Mm. Hard to do an investigation when no one's talking. Do you have a person of interest or have you had one? We have at certain points of the investigation based on just the tips that we've had. Um, We've conducted some polygraphs. 
to be able to rule people out and been successful in that and ruling people out and then also did further polygraphs on people who reported that particular portion in which the reporting party failed and admitted that they made it up. Are you currently investigating a person or people as a person of interest? Uh, no specific persons of interest right now. Uh, we still have a couple of ongoing tips that we're looking into just just because we haven't fully been able to run them to ground and, and rule them out. Brian, I understand that Bailey, Chance's wife, asked for a death certificate pretty early on in his disappearance. He is still considered a missing person. So why did she ask for that? What did she say? So that was uh, asked for because regardless of what the circumstances were at the time, the way she explained it was, she had a son to provide for. She was not working at the time. Chance was the sole bread earner for the house. And in discussing it with Chance's mom, they discussed that if he was to get on Chance's social security, they would have to have a death certificate in order to show that. But you can't have um, a death so certificate without a body, right? Um, you can after a certain period of time. How much time is that? Every state's different, and I believe here it's about seven years. So as an investigator, when you get that request, um, what do you make of that? How does that play into your search for answers? I mean, obviously, when we hear that, I mean, I was at the press conference when, when that question came up, and certainly it's a red flag, something that we're going to focus in on. And then later I had a chance to sit down and interview her at length, and yeah, that's part of the things I talked to her about. Did they ever receive the death certificate? No. Okay. Uh, there clearly is a divide between these two families. It is a tragedy. Uh, this man was loved by a lot of people. They want answers. Um, why are the families in such strife? You know, there's a, there seems to be a lot of moving parts with uh, uh, some drama that went back, you know, even prior to Chance's disappearance. Um, a lot of that, obviously, I can't speak to because it's not my circumstances. Mm. Um, I see it and sort through it to make sure that it doesn't have any bearing on the case. But yeah, it's definitely unfortunate. And you know, as a family man myself, I'd love to see the family be able to find ways to make amends and okay. come back together as a family. Uh, I did promise some viewer questions, Brian, and I just want to sure. get to, to just a general question that a lot of people have asked uh, who are following this case. Um, have other agencies been brought in to consult on the investigation, the FBI, uh, other authorities there in Nebraska, and if not, why? Uh, so many agencies have been a part of this case during the first initial week when it was more of a search phase. Uh, Several agencies were from the local area and outside the area were involved. Um, since then, as needed, other agencies have been consulted or utilized. Um, the FBI has assisted on a, on a couple portions of the investigation. They've also been consulted throughout the investigation. Um, I'm good friends with a couple members of the FBI. Um, I was... Uh, a credentialed special uh, deputy agent for the FBI for probably the better part of my career. So I know those guys very well. Um, and then also some authorities from Wyoming, uh, Wyoming DCI has helped us out on a couple of occasions. Um, South Dakota authorities mm -hmm. a little bit and also uh, the FBI out of Rapid City has helped us. Okay. Um, on certain parts of it. Well, it sounds like it is a, a full-on open investigation, but I know that your work is much more difficult two years plus after Chance has gone missing. So um, we appreciate you coming on, giving us an update, and we'll continue to follow it. And um, we'll have you back when you have some more answers to share. Uh, Brian Eads, appreciate your time. Thank you, man. If you have any information on about the whereabouts of Chance Engelbert, contact the Gearing Police Department. We've got that number on your screen. Also, if you would like to see Rich McHugh's full report on the case, go to newsnationnow.com. Here is one of Chance's brothers speaking. Check it out. Chance was my big brother and best friend. He was my mentor and just about everything we would do. We pretty much did everything the same. We always hunt and fish and building cars or driving in derby. Up next is Chance's friend, Matt Miller. 
Let's watch. Chance and I met in 2016 when he hired on at Bel Air Mine. He was extremely nervous and had failed his weld test to get hired on, but they brought him on anyhow, which was a good thing. We spent a lot of night shifts getting him trained up on procedures and how to set his welder, and all that good stuff, and he did finally pass. And that kind of kicked off our friendship. Throughout the next three years I worked with him, we got along really well. He was the type of friend you could call up at any, any time, and he would do his best to help you out. Didn't matter what he had going on, it seemed like. I was under the impression that Bailey didn't want Chance's family at the wedding, and there was a big backlash to that during okay. that night after everybody got to drinking and whatnot. Okay, so Chance had had his family at the wedding, and you were told that she maybe was not happy about that, and there yeah. was some type of fight that occurred around that. Okay, so it sounds like there might have been some tension with the families kind of early on. Yes. We wanted to go down right away, but we didn't because Don had asked me to stay and go to work at Blakeman's the first day we were supposed to be back to see if Chad showed up there. That was just the kind of guy he was. He wouldn't miss a day of work unless something was terribly wrong. So I went to work at Blakeman's till noon and then I left, gathered up everybody we could and we drove down there to start looking for him. Um, when we were down there, it was kind of hectic. Law enforcement was looking for him we kind of just went to where they said his last phone location was and started out from there. We walked mile, two miles of that river. We stayed down there for four days, just looked in every nook and cranny trying to find him. We concentrated on the river. After the fourth day, finances forced us to return, go back to work. Here's a news channel speaking about him and what happened. Let's watch it. On July 6th, 2019, Chance Engelbert went missing. He was last seen on surveillance video confirming Chance walked north on 10th Street and then cut west through Terrytown. His cell phone last pinged near a tower by Western Travel Terminal and an incoherent text message was the last anybody had seen or heard from him. Massive search efforts commenced several days later, but to no avail. And investigators say the case does remain active, but there have not been any solid leads for authorities to find out what happened that fateful Saturday night. Back in December, Engelbert's grandmother added $200,000 to the reward to help move the investigation forward. If anybody has any information on what happened to Chance Engelbert, please contact the Garing Police Department at 308-436-5088. Let's hope and pray that one day Chance's family can find out what happened to him and where he is. If you live in the area, seen Chance walk by, or know which direction he may have taken, let the authorities know. His family just wants to bring him home.